what they say is the right policy is the right policy. And if you say anything else, that's misinformation, that's dis- disinformation, that's malinformation. That puts you at risk of threatening the stability of the government. And you could be named a terrorist on the FBI watch list. And we've seen before, we've seen, we see it, you know, all the time, smaller YouTubes complain or some of these guys who are YouTube stars, Steven Crowder. Um, we've seen, you know, Alex Jones get kicked off. These guys are all still can see, even though they're really big, they're considered kind of alternative, but we've seen it happen to big mainstream platforms last fall. During the election, we saw it happen to the New York Post. The New York Post had their Twitter suspended for sharing the Hunter Biden um, laptop stuff, I believe it was, or documents, something with Hunter Biden, right? They got their Twitter deleted, or not deleted, I'm sorry, suspended. And now we see The Hill, which has the show Rising on YouTube, got their YouTube suspended off of rising. This We're talking like a mainstream news outlet. And so um, Kim Iverson does a video on her channel kind of explaining what went down, how they got suspended. It didn't have anything actually to do with what Kim did. It had to do with them streaming CPAC. Just streaming CPAC. You can't stream anything anymore. So go check out Kim's video. She explains the whole situation, but just talking about the censorship, right? If you don't have this right set of views, then you're not allowed. You're not allowed to talk. You're not allowed to speak. And yet then it will come out six months later, a year later that, oh, you know what? Actually that lab leak stuff you're talking about actually probably right. Or, or there's, it's at least a a big possibility, right? Oh yeah. That thing that you said about the effectiveness of the, of the shot. Yeah. Actually not as effective as we said, actually, you know, it wears off and you need to come get a booster. So you know, you say it too early and you're conspiracy theorist, you're banned, you're suspended, you're demonized, you're pinned as somebody who spreads misinformation, anti-vaxxer, uh, white supremacist, terror, you, you, all sorts of things, every name in the book. But, you know, you're, you're the head of the CDC. You get to say whatever you, you, you get to say whatever you want. What you want is obviously the prescribed narrative that's being pushed down. And then you can say a year later, well, you know, maybe we should have asked some questions. You know, those questions that people were getting suspended and banned for. Yeah, maybe we should have asked those. So this was tweeted out by Jay Bhattacharya, who's been awesome this whole time. I spoke to him a little bit over a year ago when I was doing the organization Teachers for Open Schools. And at this point, New York City schools were closed. They would they would have been closed since November and wouldn't open up until I think it would be like next week. So a year ago, next week, they opened back up again, the middle school and high school level. And so I was furiously trying to get schools open and I was able to do a podcast with Jay Bhattacharya. And since that time, he's gotten a Twitter and he's been really getting out there and being more and more vocal, really advocating, especially for the children, but just also in general. And he says, this clip is infuriating. It is an omission of the public health malpractice by the CDC director, right? Malpractice because she spread, you could say malinformation, but maybe just disinformation. Who knows how they're defining those things? The main clinical endpoint of the vaccine trials was symptomatic infection at three to four months post-vax, not infection or disease transmission. So, um, and then this is basically like, listen to her, what she says. I guess we're going to go to the tweet. Um, you know, I think I can tell you where I was when the CNN feed came that it was 95% effective on um, the vaccine. So many of us wanted to be hopeful. So many of us wanted to say, okay, this is our ticket out, right? Now we're done. Um, so I think we had perhaps 
too little caution and too much optimism um, for some good things that came our way. I, I really do. I, I think all of us wanted this to be done. Nobody said waning when, when you know, mm -hmm. oh, this vaccine is going to work. Oh, well, <laughs> maybe it'll work, it'll wear off. Um, nobody said, well, what if the next variant doesn't, it doesn't, it's not as potent against the next variant. Where could we have improved? which is just complete nonsense because plenty of people did say those things. Plenty of people did ask those questions, but what happened to them, Rochelle, when they did? Oh, they got suspended. They got completely banned like Alex Berenson from Twitter. And you had the nerve to get on TV and t discredit those people and say, oh, you know, you need to stop questioning. You need to just can, and they're still out here continuing, take it, take it, take it, get boosted. And yet, oh, maybe we should be slowing down, asking some questions here. You know, I got to get in at least a little bit, I told you so. Like, I'm not going to sit here and, and rub it in people's faces, but come on, man. I told you so. We told you so. I, I was asking these questions and I was labeled as crazy. I was like, oh, no, the government just wants the pandemic to end. And I'm sure, you know, like, I'm sure there's a little bit of that, maybe. But there's so much money to be made in the pandemic. Do they really? It's a honeypot. We just keep digging into the taxpayer's wallet. Um, and then, you know, another thing I saw interesting, this just came through in one of the chats that I'm in. The head of a big pharma company, Bayer proudly proclaims the COVID MNRA vaccine as a gene therapy and that misleading the public was useful to create widespread adoption. Twitter's are banning and blocking share capabilities this video, um, hence the recording. And when I saw it wasn't even recording, it was just a picture that's posted on Instagram. So, you know, straight off the bat, though, it's like this dude is from Big Pharma. So, I don't necessarily trust him. He doesn't have the most street cred coming from Big Pharma. I mean, he doesn't, he's not necessarily involved in, um, any of the COVID stuff that I know of, who knows? I'm sure they have lots of arms and lots of different themes, uh, things that they do, uh, you know, and there could be profit incentive in it for him, right? He'd be, oh, I'm going to try to discredit these things. And that's more market share for me and we could get in and different things. So I'm, I'm, I don't know how trustworthy that this guy is. But just something I'm putting out there, trying to let people know interesting information that I think is useful for helping people form the most coherent picture that might be possible in this day and age with the information overload and the culture wars and just everything that's going on. Thanks for checking out this video. Make sure you've smashed that like button and leave me a comment down below. And while you're down there, Make sure you're subscribed to the channel and hit that notification bell so you don't miss any of my videos, which you can watch more of by clicking here or here. Or for even more, go to teachingliberty.org and join our community today.